Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Game episode 69 and like all good things 69 you have to wait a little bit longer to get it. Uh, <laughs> we might have skipped the week last week. There was a few things happening in our in our lives. Uh, so I uh, I've moved house officially. Um, I'm in a, I'm in a new office so it's a different white wall that you can stare at now compared to, <laughs> to previously. Uh, but you yeah. know Think things that things are going well. How are, how are you, Chunt? What's going on in your life? Oh man, I've been playing an absolute ass load of games on my new TV. So yeah, that's all I've been doing, man. Really, I finish work and play games, and then go to bed. We're both going. <laughs> we're both going to be guys with new TVs. Oh uh, yes, because mine gets hung up tomorrow. So you're going to have your nice. You're going to have your 65 nano cell, and I'm going to have my 77 OLED, and this is this is. I think Jamie has an LG as well. So we're just, we're all playing the ultimate experience for games. LG, yes, indeed. <laughs> well, speaking of what we've been playing, uh, mine's pretty short. So I'll just start uh, because before I started moving everything, I actually was playing Thomas Was Alone. I bought that for a dollar ninety five on the PlayStation nice. Store. And um, yeah, I've been making my way through that. I think I'm up to level eight, and it's just it was a nice, cool puzzle puzzle game to play while I was going through. I'm not really paying attention to the writing, which uh, I have. Um, in in uni, I played through like twenty minutes of it and was really enjoying the writing back back then when I played it. But um, yeah, this time I was just kind of doing it just as a simple puzzle thing to play. Uh, well, I heard that was the charming, charming part, part about that game. I remember when that came out. Yeah, it's and the bit, the bits that I am listening to and getting, I'm like, that's that's really cool how they're just like each of these blocks uh, just have character to them, and I'm like, that's really that's really cool. But yeah, I was just using it as a all right. I've got ten fifteen minutes before I got to go to bed just to put my mind onto something else that's not moving um, or the house. Yeah. So and i couldn't get a 2k game in so i was like this is a dollar 95 i'm gonna i'm gonna play it and give it a go so that was literally all i'd probably been playing the last two weeks um so i know you're probably got a long list of games over the last two yeah, weeks so. That's why i was looking through my phone because I, I was going to my achievement list of just because it shows you most recent played games so that's why i was looking at my phone I wasn't being rude so um well, I'll start, right? <laughs> um, we go all the way to... All right. Gears 5 Hive Busters expansion. So Jamie and I tried that, but it just fell over itself. Like the online matchmaking or networking, the rubber banding everywhere. It, I don't know what was going on, but every time Jamie and I try and sit down and play that, it always happens with him. <laughs> it's just, it's not a... It's not a very good experience as far as the game goes. Like it's always a pleasure with Jamie, but it's the game. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, but so we just we got an hour in. We're like, nah, this is this is good. I've got to go to bed anyway. See so, ya. Yeah. I haven't gone back to it yet, but I will because it's just it's it's a graphical showcase. Like on my end, I was like, wow, this looks amazing. And I've heard that said a number of times. Where if you want to see what the um, like Xbox One can do, because it's on Xbox One, the base model. <laughs> If you want to see what that that can do or what they've squeezed out of that model, go play that one. Um, or if you want to see what just even now what the Series X is capable of, and it's not even like a fully made game for Series X, and it's like wow, it's, it's blue. It just blew my face off. I was like, wow, that's fucking amazing. So I'll probably go back and just do that myself. Um, you know, gears is like it's always my thing. I'll just go do that. But anyway, then I tested out Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. That's had an update, a graphical upgrade. I just wanted to see what that was like. That looks very pretty. Skyrim, I played a bit more of that. <laughs> Skyrim. Uh, ah, something edition. new. Something, <laughs> yeah, something yeah, new, yeah. newly released. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, but I was like, man, what does Skyrim look like on this TV? And I was like, yeah, okay, that looks really great. I can't wait to play that again one day. Um, uh, Flight Simulator, I played that. Man, it's such a chill game. So chill. I. It's the game I need right now. Um, just with just the way what the world is and like we're in another lockdown, it's like, God damn it, cool. I'm just going to sit here and just fly around the world, you know, and just visit places I can't normally see. And you know, I flew over yeah, Mexico yeah. and I did that whole thing. I was, <laughs> you know, I, I put in my um, fiance's address. I'm like, oh yeah, let's have a look, you know, and flew over there. Um, her, her town It's like, oh, look, there's a house and everything. And I, I went home. I went to my hometown. Um, 
of Rockhampton and flew over that. It's just like it looks uncanny. Like they even had the Rockhampton airport there, like the tarmac and the building and all that shit. Like holy fuck, it looks, it looks really, really, really good. good. I mean, all the the map, um, uh, like imagery or whatever you want to call it, they pulled down from Bing Maps. Uh, really adds to the whole thing. Like visually, it looks amazing. Like all the satellite imagery is all there, and it looks it looks well, when you're high enough, it looks like real life. I was like, wow, this is pretty spectacular. But when you get closer to the ground, or you crash, like I did a few times. All the trees look jank as all hell, and all, all the buildings look like they're smudgy blocks and shit. Um, but you know, whatever, what are you gonna do? It's all satellite data and whatever. But I highly recommend, highly recommend giving that game a go if you're on Xbox or on Game Pass, or if your computer can actually run it. It runs how, very well. How does it run? Yeah, look, it, it, I'm actually surprised because I watched the PC coverage when it launched, and I was like, wow, everyone's saying you need something quite substantial to run this game. And I was a bit concerned about how it was going to run on Xbox, but um, it surprisingly well. Like uh, even Series S can run it at 1080p, uh, you know, and that's significantly weaker. So that you know, we, we won't yeah. get into that than, than the um, the Series X. But on Series X itself, man, um, it's optimized uh, or okay. <laughs> there are some parts where it's like a bit kind of framey, like when you when you jump into the cockpit and looking around, it gets a bit framey. Or, but for the most part, when I'm outside, it's all smooth and everything. But they put out a note saying, yeah, look, we're still patching the game for the console. Um, basically, the underlining comment was like, you have no idea what it took to get this to run on the console. Give us a break. <laughs> you know? And uh, the fact that it is, it's pretty spectacular. So, But man, it runs. It crashed for me once at launch, but I tried it again a couple of days later. I didn't have a crash. So they're obviously working on it really well. But um, yeah, man, if you've got Game Pass and an Xbox uh, series console, it's not, uh, I don't think you can play it on the older ones. I'm probably wrong, but who cares? Uh, we'll give it a go. I'm leaving that installed. I'm no, I'm not removing that game. I, it's my kind of chill go-to game. Um, how, big that, is, how big is that game actually? Oh, it's that, over a hundred gig. Like just the base. Yeah, I was going to say, it'd be yeah. huge. Um, yeah. Do you know what I, I also, t- this totally yeah. um, left my mind. Speaking of, because uh, Jamie... I think last time was mentioning he was going to jump into or he has jumped into Plague Tale Innocence. Oh, yes. And it's so weird. The same studio that made Flight Simulator also made Plague Tale Innocence. <laughs> it's the same studio. And I'm like, that is, those are two totally different games that I would not yeah. have thought are made by the same Very people. Different. Very different ballparks, yeah. And they're both, you know, well-received, which is good. But, um, like, I mean, yeah, I, I recommend playing it. Even though... You, even if you don't like flight simulator games, if you never really gave a shit, I don't really either. <laughs> I couldn't really care less for simulator games like that. But, you know, obviously the hype contributed to it, but it looked great. It looked like, holy shit, that's something I want to see and I want to play that, particularly on my new TV. It looks stunning. Um, but yeah, after that, I went back to Assassin's Creed Origins. Finally, I finished that. Um, just smashed that out that week. Um, I was actually surprisingly close to the end than I thought I was. I was only like halfway through. Um, when I stopped playing it, uh, I booted up Two Human, that old Xbox 360 exclusive that was out, uh, just to see what it looked like on the TV. A lot of this is like, what does that game look like? What does that game look like? Because I want to go back to this game. What does it look like on this TV? Uh, Two Human, I, I've, I'm leaving that installed. I'm definitely going to go back to that because I never finished it. It's been one of those games in the in, in my side, like Origins, where I'm like, yeah. I, I want to finish that. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Monster Hunter World, still playing that. I bought the Iceborne expansion, and we're still going. Me and the lady, we're still playing that. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 is an absolutely stunning showcase of a game. Wow, I already knew that, but seeing it live on my new TV and through the Series X like upgrades and everything, holy crap. It's just, I've said it before, I'll say it again, but NetherRealms are the gold standard for fighting games, and any other game that can't really get up to what they've done, it's like, man just try harder you know like I've, i know not not all these fighting games have the budget that mortal Kombat can get but man you gotta try it's amazing i'm just playing it for the story it's like a movie fantastic um highest, Ascent, sell, highest selling game in that franchise too mk11 it, oh finally oh cool yeah all past right. it nice yeah i saw um ed boone post about that it's, it's almost the highest one so it's obviously good that it's finally reached that but uh the the ascent uh, that's a new one on Xbox Game Pass, currently exclusive um, to wherever Xbox is playable, whatever. Um, man, <laughs> I'll just put it out there now. It's buggy as hell. Um, it looks absolutely gorgeous, though. It's I was surprised. I I went in quite low. Like I, I had hype for this game going in leading up to like, yeah, this game looks like something I want to do. 
Um, it's like a Diablo twin stick shooter cyberpunk kind of experience. The maps are massive, like massive. You can get lost if you're not careful. So many characters to talk to. Uh, so many side quests open up as you go. It's a lot of loot and like all that kind of stuff. It's all there if you want it. Um, but man, just I, I'd probably hold off. <laughs> um, I mean, like Sarah and I were playing it co-op online and she had all kinds of bugs happening on her end and the game crashed on us a couple of times. Like some enemies weren't spawning in or getting, they're getting stuck in walls or, you know, just um, menus weren't opening or you couldn't even quit out of the game. Like you couldn't quit to main menu, <laughs> you know, in some instances. So we enjoyed what we were playing. Like we can see what the game is and we're like, damn, this is great. Until you hit that wall of like, well, yep, that took us out. So we just stopped playing it. And I was like, look, let's just wait a while. We'll come back to the game when it's patched a bit. But to their credit, it's been made by a studio of like eight or 12 people. And the fact that they've been able to do that, it, I mean, it's amazing. If you sit down and go, all right, what is this game and play it or watch a video or something on it and you go, wow, you know, a very small handful of people made this game and it's super impressive. So and there's no way they would have been able to stress test it being on Game Pass day one with that many. No, no none of that. I mean, I watched the developer interview before they launched and they're like, yeah, we pulled every favor we could around the industry for people that we knew just to try and finish this game you know, and get it done and ready for launch so you know, they're a small team so they <laughs> uh props to them man I i'm very keen to come back to it i'll probably leave it installed um oh terra it's another multiplayer game t-e-r-a it's got like a cat girl on it i made a character online for it it was it was sarah's uh suggestion she wanted to play it not me whatever oh. yeah but uh, uh, Games I, made the char- I made the character and then it crashed so whatever <laughs> <laughs> free to play games everyone but yeah then lastly the medium I'm, i've gone back to that and i'm almost finished uh, that was another game that was the thorn in my side that i wanted to finish um and I, i'm enjoying it it's it's um it's a bit boring in parts but uh the mood and atmosphere are undeniable so i can't wait to finish that but yeah so i've been playing a fuckload of games since i got my new tv man <laughs> yes i'm sure I'm, I'm gonna be right behind you oh yes yes um, well, I'll, I'll let you keep going a little bit. So we've basically got two weeks of stories to kind of pass through. We're not really going to touch on the Activision stuff, um, a lot of that, cause there's not really for us much for us to say. Um, we're not anywhere near that, the industry in that, in that sense. And it's, uh, well, it's not, like be, be, be nice to each other, be good to each other. Like, come yeah, on. It's just, it's just more shit news of shit companies being shit to people, you know? Cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, so hopefully that um, sorts itself out in a positive way f- for everybody. Um, yes. So yeah, Unreal Engine 5 had a nice little uh, tech demo, which um, I, I, you can take it from here because you're the one that mm. spotted it first. Yes. So, oh man, this is the whole, the coalition working behind the scenes going, yes, we've got something nice that we're going to show with this Unreal 5. And everybody's like, oh, they're not really going to show much. They wouldn't have had it for very long. It's like, man, you've got no idea of the history of that company and the people that work there and how closely knit they are with um, Epic. They actually had help from Epic with this uh, demo and getting it across the line and like learning the new software. If anyone's going to showcase what Unreal 5 is going to do, it's going to be the coalition. Like I said, with Gears 5, how that looks and runs on base Xbox One it's it's magic or sorcery or, or something <laughs> to get that game running on that old system so man if you watch if you go watch the gameplay demo it's very short it's like 20 30 seconds or something and then they've got some character model um examples of you know in-game models or whatever they're calling it and you're just like holy moly like if it, i was wowed by the fact that i could see jd phoenix's pause in gears 5 <laughs> you know on my new tv and then i watch these new demos i'm like oh my god like, I want to see Marcus Phoenix's ball hair or something, you know, in Gear 6, if I can. Like, that'd be fantastic. So I- I'm very impressed. I mean, it's the proof's going to be in the pudding. As always, these game engine demos are always proof of concept or in very, like, um, restricted environments or purposely built scenarios. You know, what does it look like and how does it run on an actual live game? But uh, the little asterisks they had on these demos is, like, this is running on Series X which is important to know. It's not just running on PC, a pseudo build. They made a point of that, which is awesome to know. So if they can get games looking like this on Series X, holy shit, man. Like, I know we've already talked about it in the past of 
in past episodes of like how good games are going to look if they already look as good as they do by the end of this generation. And I think, you know, we're on that precipice of we've had this round of games that have come out that are like left over from last year. And, you know, those, the, the time frame built on all the systems. And now we're moving into the, the period of time where you start seeing all these new games built on new engines and new software and new power. And it's just a, a little snippet of what's to come. That's how I took it. And I'm very impressed and looking forward to it. Um, but you've probably watched it. What are those two things? Like, I know you had a comment about the rocks. You'd like to see something that's not rocks. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they are, you know, they're going with a consistent color palette. I'll I'll just say that yeah. over all these demos. But and you understand why they do like um, rock um, transformations and things like that because it's showing you how many how many polygons you can fit into this to and how it can adapt, uh, getting closer to it or further away, and how how the engine works with that. And uh, my thing during the week was is just you know I. I've always thought um, Naughty Dog's Rage Engine is the best, but and normally that's because of they don't necessarily make the biggest games. So I've, you n I've never had to see it in like an open world setting, but they because they always just it's always the little details with the Naughty Dog games, like when you look at the character models. But looking at looking at the tech demo for, for Unreal Engine Five, I'm like, wow, if they can get close to matching like what The Last of Us Part Two kind of looks like, but then because Unreal Engine is is meant to be an engine that is used for so many different purposes because it's used by so many different developers, if they can kind of have that across the board getting close to that and you can just apply it to any type of game or genre that you're trying to do, um, God, it just, and especially they've got the, they bought, they bought a, a web-based company that works on like uh, web-based, um, 3D models and things like that um, that sell 3D models for people, and they bought they bought them to go along with what they already do um, with the stuff that we heard about early in the year about Unreal Engine being on a web uh, like a web web base like uh, character model. So I'm like, so they're 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 pushing they're they're pushing so much with that engine, um, yeah. and. You know, even even uh, what was it? Uh, the Days Gone guys, um, Ben, even Ben Studio use That's Unreal cool, Engine, yeah. and Sony are invested in it, and Xbox have been using it for a lot of their games for so long. So everyone is watching what what Unreal is doing. Um, or even yeah, yeah. movies are now. Like the movie studios are like, holy crap! Like yeah, this... Mandalorian is made in Unreal Engine. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and Disney have three. Vol uh, volumes like one in LA one in the UK one in Australia and they're all going to be using that tech so yeah. it's yeah they're they're growing Epic is growing and growing like it's, it's just huge yeah they'll uh, buy another wall to work in <laughs> that's true um, now they get a lot of money from Tencent obviously because Tencent owns 40% of them um, but Tencent also made some other purchases Recently, with Sumo Digital, uh, you best know best know them for Sackboy, A Big Adventure came out on PS5, but also Crackdown Three. Like they just work work on a bunch of different games all the time, and now Tencent have purchased them. Um, people are getting a little bit worried in, in the gaming sphere about Tencent purchasing all of these companies uh, and really and really getting in there and. Nobody. It, it doesn't sound like there's many stories of people just saying no. We don't want, we don't want Chinese money in our in our games. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't really have much to say on that part of it because I just I just don't look into that in terms of researching. But I do get worried about. Like it's, we're not we're not anywhere close to like monopolies, but it does scare me a little bit that there's just big companies that are starting to to swallow up a lot of the, the medium to bigger talent. Uh, and, you know, what will happen is that they'll get bought out, they'll get all changed, that studio becomes something different and then people leave and then they create another studio and then they grow up. So I know it's just kind of a cyclical thing, but uh, I'm it's, it's scary to see how many uh, just... Bigger studios getting bought up, not necessarily just smaller, smaller support stuff. Well, you can understand why they would sell. Like, 
you hear a lot of these stories of a lot of these studios are well not a lot of them but many studios are one game away from failure you know mm. if the next game they're building doesn't <clears throat> doesn't succeed or make the money back or can't pay the investors back then you're under right so you get all these smaller to average studios that are like well a bit of security would be nice and you know that little passion project i want to do or that little um, idea that's bigger than our budget um can uh, dictate at the moment if we can get another company with more money to i want to build this vision that i've got like those kind of thoughts i would assume naturally that goes through leads minds and everything if you're looking at an opportunity if someone's got billions of dollars to kind of have <laughs> available to you to make that project that you've always dreamed of i mean why wouldn't you you know you're only you're alive once you know you're dead a long time so whatever and it's job security for the people that work there as well i, I know it's a lot of flack gets around about oh the sellouts or these companies are buying up everything's like well you don't really care really do you like you get the game that you want to play and you stop playing it you don't care about that studio right <laughs> like you, you honestly these people that are like on twitter going oh you know clutching their pearls and shit over this kind of stuff it's like you don't care you know you don't as long as you get the game that you want and it's good or you're not even probably interested in buying the games that are going to make anyway it's like and that's the whole different argument that I, I just I did see that going around on Twitter like it always does. It's like really cool, but I mean, good on man. If I was a studio, fuck, I'd sell out. I, I mean, you know, I'd probably try and keep some integrity. <laughs> but if I was like, I really want to make that Superman game, you know, and if it's if I can't make it using the Superman brand, I'll make something original, you know, and make it like the Superman game I always wanted. But if I don't have the budget for it, you goddamn right, I'll be trying to hunt around for some money, you know. That's the game I want to see in the world because no one can do it. <laughs> no one has done it. And the ones that try, they fail. But I don't know, 10 cent, whatever. As long as they make the good games and don't screw the people over like Activision Blizzard, man. Like, as long as you don't have any of that shit going on, I'm good. Done. My my thing is, and so many people always try and bring it back to like Xbox, right? And they're like, oh, anyway, Xbox are buying out all these studios. Like they're becoming a monopoly, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like those people aren't, really looking into much more of it because I think it's the Embracer group that have 60 studios underneath them. Like, and that, so like that's your THQ Nordic that have just under them themselves. I think it's roughly 20 themselves. And then they've got Saber Interactive, Coke Media. They just bought uh gearbox. Like, so it's more like Embracer Group are just buying up all these people and then Tencent, if they're not buying these studios, they're putting so much money into holding so many of the shares. Um, I think they, like in Sumo Digital, they already had 8.75% and right now, because it's the, the offer that they've put forward, they've already got 27% in, in, in agreements to take it so they just have and it's just going it's getting put forward to the rest of the shareholders to see if they want to go through as well so it's just um yeah be worried uh about tencent but not necessarily worried about games as a whole and they might just wow everybody you know they might just change the game they might put out something that would never have happened that's true try to be positive <laughs> I'm gonna let you pick one of the, the one of the next stories. Halo Infinite. Holy shit! Let's talk about that for a minute. Man, let's talk about I, Halo. I went ahead and blocked every mention of Halo, Halo Infinite, Spartan, John One One Seven, like Corpse Child, everything to do with Halo that I could think of. I put in my muted words list on Twitter because this PC build of the uh, Halo Insiders um, multiplayer that went out to everybody that you know, was invited to play it includes uh, system files or um, game files that contain like the entire campaign <laughs> you know all the story beats like the ending like all that kind of shit as soon as i read the headline i was like well yep like i i am i'm not having this ruined for me i'm really not and even um what's his name i've got the twitter open here good old twitter let's see joseph joseph wait no that's kingdom where is it i literally had it over there we are. joseph staten from um now um creative lead or studio lead whatever he is at 343 yeah um he's like hey folks heads up <laughs> we unintentionally included a small number of halo infinite campaign files in the tech preview build unfortunately these files contain spoilers leaks like this are painful for the dev team and can ruin the campaign experience for everyone so please 
keep your eyes peeled for spoilers and don't spread them if you see them love heart like that's not going to stop anyone <laughs> so and like I, i've been around enough time to know when to kind of put up these blinders and i did it straight away after i shared that um disappointing it really is disappointing to see that and a massive oversight i don't know how they made that happen like whoever ran the check there's got to be of someone like a gatekeeper for this stuff. Like, I would imagine before you put out a build to the public or in, you know, public invitees uh, to enjoy your stuff, and you know people are going to be data mining that shit. Someone in that invi in invitee list is going to data mine or get it to someone in front of someone that will data mine the shit out of it just for content or just to spoil things, you know? I'm very disappointed about that, and I hope I don't come across it. I've been avoiding YouTube uh, as well because you just know you're going to see stuff. You know, people like to spoil things everywhere, left and right. So, um, you know, if you're not aware of it, if you're watching this far in and you're like, damn, I'm, I can't wait for Halo Infinite, go ahead and maybe, like, take some precautions because I, for one, refuse to have the end of that Forerunner Saga sport for me. I want to see what happens to Cortana. You know, I the Halo 5 was quite the cliffhanger. I don't want it ruined. And um, even what the new story is, it's rounding up. Halo 5 and that um, Forerunner saga, it's wrapping that up and starting a new story in that one. So, yeah, very disappointing on that. But what are you going to do? I mean, at least they owned it. They're like, yep. Whoops. <laughs> FYI, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, um, as, you know, take, as, as someone that had to live through the, uh, the Last of Us leaks last year, a uh, couple of months before that game came out, um, it can be challenging to avoid those i uh, i managed i actually managed to um watching youtube watching youtube videos like about it is okay the problem is when you get into when you watch videos that are talking about like oh i wonder what happens in last of us part two blah blah, blah. then you start getting the recommendeds and it's people just like in the thumbnail or in the in the heading just spoiling it so i basically only really watch stuff that was official release from them or maybe if they did a thing with IGN or something like that, I would watch those, but I avoided everything else. Um, yeah, very, very little went on, went on Twitter unless I saw some things that I wanted to actually, like if I saw an article and someone posted something, I went to that post directly. I didn't like just go through a feed. Um, so yeah, yeah, it sucks when it happens and I hope like, also, while there might be some spoilers in it, um, as someone that did play Last of Us, sometimes reading it or just seeing a file name and stuff like that is not the entire story. Yeah, um, the whole journey of it and experience, so, yeah. Yeah, so I'd, I would just be cautious with that as well before even thinking, oh, that's a shit way to end it's all you you need to see okay. it in context you always need to see yeah. it in context because it's totally different well it's like that uh he-man the masters of the universe new series I, i've yet to watch that it's on my thing to do but <laughs> i've already had all of it well not all of it but the key points i've had it ruined for me because of social media i don't look up master the universe or he-man I, I don't actively look for that but it, it just because the the circles i'm in you just end up seeing some stuff or even on YouTube that because it recommends for some reason I watched some video that's attached to another one and gets recommended somewhere. You get this particular video and just in the thumbnail, it's like these key points happen in this thing, you know, it's screenshots of what is happening. I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> you know, like really? God, oh, come you on. asshole. Yeah I, was, yeah. I was right pissed, right pissed. But yeah, so that's why I'm like trying to avoid, YouTube and just play more games. <laughs> you know, if I'm just if I'm not looking at social media or YouTube, I'm playing games. You know, until I get to there. So, first world problems, right? But yeah, that's all I've got to say on Halo. Yeah, no, nah, that that's good. Well, um, I I, I want to jump into Annapurna. They had a uh, a little showcase. I didn't get to watch all of it. All I will say is that the only one that really made me watch the whole gameplay footage was stray the cat yes, the cat i was hoping you'd say that because <laughs> just say i watched it i'm like this is actually looking a lot better than even i thought it was going to because i'm a big stickler for um like smooth animation right uh, i you know some people will say 
I have friends that you know play Dark Souls in that, and with the Dark Souls, I tried them, but that because they are so stagnant and the animations aren't that aren't that fluid, I've never had a problem. Like Witcher is a slower, like compared to like your Assassin's Creed or you know Ghost of Tsushima or something. Witcher's uh, sword fights are are slow and methodical, but the animation is good. Like it's 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 fluid and it's constantly moving. And so anytime there's a game that's a little bit jarring, I will always be like, okay, well, that that's not quite my thing. And I'm watching this stray game with a cat and I'm just like, wow, they've really got the movements down pat on, <laughs> on this. And I kind of like, there is a moment where they, where you, you do have attack abilities, but I like that most of it is avoiding. Yep. Uh, it's like when we saw that jet, the far shore, a few weeks oh, ago yes. that they showed off and the game wasn't about attacking it was just about observing and avoiding things and i kind of like w- that there are games out there that are getting a spotlight and it's not about it's about conflict but not conflict in a combative sense it's just puzzles and you're a cat in this futuristic world and you're trying to make your way to something i don't know but that that was literally the one that stuck out to me because i'm like this actually is looking a lot better than I thought it even, even would. Yeah, 100% agree. Well, I, I tuned out with all the other stuff that was in that showcase. The Australia was the one I was like, yes, like, give me that. I know it's tied to PlayStation only or whatever at the moment, but I I, I would definitely, I would hold, if, it does, if it never comes to Xbox, I will get a PS5. I'm getting one eventually, but I want that game. Stray, when they first showed that uh, trailer ages ago and whatever the state of play was, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I, I want to know what that is. Like, it just looks so cool. But I agree with you on the whole, uh, the combat thing. I, I was hoping it was going to be more of, uh, this, you're this cat exploring this city or the, you know these streets or this metro area that you're in I, I was hoping it was going to be more of that but you know cool whatever there is some conflict in in combat whatever in it but hopefully it's minimal like um part of the reason why i'm enjoying the medium at the moment is because of that because you can't fight really in the medium you're exploring and um solving this um story and uh puzzles in in the spirit world and all that kind of shit and you have to hide and run away from this beast at some point that um that you come across, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who ever gives a shit. I mean, you've probably played it by now, but there's this thing that you can't fight back against and you've got to sneak around or hide from it and very select moments in the game. But the rest of it, it was nice to just be exploring this story. And I'm hoping that's what that cat game, Stray, is more so about. And you're not just upgrading some random backpack that you've got at some tech dude's place that you just stumbled upon. But who knows? I mean, whatever. I, I can't wait to see gameplay for it, like from actual people playing it and uh, like a more in-depth look at it. Um, but that game, it stuck with me, man. Like I remember when we watched, was it E3 or a state of play? I don't, don't know. It doesn't I really think matter, it was but... the PS5 showcase or whatever it was last year. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I remember when we watched that and I was like, oh my God. I even like commented on that time. Like, oh, I need that game. <laughs> I want to <laughs> play it. You know, so yeah. First time well, I saw it, I was like, oh, this is chun- this is a chunk game the entire yeah, time. Right? Yeah. So like um I, I don't I don't really like many of like Annapurna type games. It's just a bit too kind of different for me. So whatever. But that one, yeah, that's took it out, um stood out to me. So yeah, whatever. I, not, yeah, not really that, that's something me. that stood out to me too, is that you know, I I like when Annapurna games um pop up. I think they have another game called Open Roads, which is gonna come out. Uh, probably well, I think it's. I think they'll aim for this year. It might be one that delays till next year, like everything else is at the moment. But I think I realized that I don't know if I'd ever want to watch a full showcase. Yeah. Of just their games, um, I think I like it when I see them pop it, pop up in other like other showcases, and I'm like, oh, it's an Annapurna game. We'll see. We'll see what this is. This could be interesting. Um, I, I don't agree. know if I just watch a full thing of it. I agree, man. Like you're right, because I was weirded out by that. I didn't think they would, they were big enough, or I didn't think they had an, enough like notoriety to be like, yeah, we've got our own showcase. It's like when Square Enix did their showcase <laughs> at E3. I was like, you only really showed two games, <laughs> really, really on that thing. Like, did you need your own showcase? It was really just a Guardian showcase, if anything. But whatever. I, I yeah. I agree with you in that regard. Hope they might learn from it. I mean, I wish them all some success. I'm not going to shit on their pants, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, what else? So apart from a showcase, we also there was also an EA Play live event, which once again not a lot of it interested me. There were some little stories about how you know Respawn is going to be making some new IP, but not they didn't tell us anything about what type of game or it, it, they we, they were they just told us that it wasn't a Star Wars game. So I'm like, well, that's that's good to know what it isn't. Um, but I guess the the big thing that they say for the end, which I think everybody knew about coming into it, was that they were making a Dead Space remake. Uh, did you ever play the original Dead Space? Yeah, one and two. I didn't never finish them though, but because I'm a sook. Yeah, you, same as me. I got scared. I got one into one really dark spot, and every time I played it, I'm like, I have to play this with the lights off at night. Like that's how you play these games, and I probably yeah, I probably played for four six hours or something, four to six hours, and, and yeah, hit this one spot, and I'm like, nah, this is just too much. I just can't do it. Um, well, but, you're better than me. But I love I love so much about, you know, how, like, the UI is all in-game. Like, there's nothing yeah. on your screen. It's all your health bar is on your suit. The UI is something that pops up in front of your character that you're not yeah. going to menus. Like, it, I, I really like that stuff, and there's not many games that can do it the way that Dead Space did. Um, that being said, I never played two or three, uh, cause one was well, kind of the experience that I was after with that game. Don't even bother with three. Three is when like the company and executives got a hold of it, <laughs> you know, and they Hollywoodified it, you know, it, it took all the, um, the spirit out of it and the tension and the horror out of it and just became like a bro shooter, you know, with the dead space skin on it. So don't even bother. But two, two was, um, a lot better in in many ways than the first one, but I think the first one has a very um, very dark place in people's hearts because of how good it was. <laughs> you know, I say dark in a positive way because uh, it was just changed a lot of things for a horror genre at that time. But I mean, to EA's um, EA's um, chagrin, I'll say is they really tried. Like, horror games aren't meant for mass multimedia appeal, right? Like, it, not in the scope that they did with Dead Space. You know, it, it's just not that wide of an appeal, right? They did an anime series, they had a comic book series, they had a video game. I think they did a, a low-budget movie at some point on it. And, like, the creative director behind the franchise was like, yeah, we, this is our big thing, this is going to be our cross-media thing. It's like, mate, no. And they pumped so much money into that, <laughs> you know, and then they could have just put it into the game to make it a better experience. But, um, I mean, that's part of the reason why EA shut down um, oh, I'm trying not to sneeze, but it's like half the reason why EA shut down all that uh, IP. Visceral. Yeah, visceral because just the money they didn't make back because of all the money they pu- pumped out for marketing on this thing. Like there were, you know, posters on buses and buildings and shit. It's like this is a horror game, man. It's a niche, but whatever. But I, I see the conversation online about how people are so excited about this remake, and that's cool and all. But what you really should be doing is going and seeing what the actual guys that were shut down by EA and they built a new studio are doing. Um, the, the name of the studio escapes me right now, which is a really bad way to kind of segue into this, but they made a game um, trailer on, I think it was an Xbox showcase, where it was the team from Visceral who made um, one of the creators of Dead Space started this studio. And they released this trailer, and it's like it is Dead Space, <laughs> but it's it's horrifying. Like even I was like, God damn! Like the monster in this trailer, I was like, No, nope, no, nope, you can't get me to play this shit. <laughs> no way. I was like, No, I mean, good on you, you've nailed it, but fuck, that's not for me. Like what you should be doing is like, you know, EA shut down Visceral for no reason other than their own uh, failure to maintain what they were doing in a corporate level. It wasn't Visceral's fault. It was just a money problem that people just executives spending more money than they could get back so yeah it's cool that you've got your ip that's coming back and dead space has a lot of fans and whatever but i I, i'm kind of against the whole well you know if why are you praising them for this when they're the ones that shut it down in the first place like that whole thing like i'm probably not explaining it very well but like i was like i saw the announcement like yeah cool but i mean all you're doing is trying to prey on this nostalgia for this franchise and maybe try to get some good guy points, you know, from all the shit that you got for shutting down that studio and all the other ones, you know, at that time, there was no reason for it. 
you know, and um, I, I would rather people get excited for the guys that actually made Dead Space and their new IP that they're doing. It's going to be what you what you loved. Like they've already said, like, yeah, it's our Dead Space. That's basically what we're doing here, but it's a new UIP. I don't know. I'm a bit kind of um, on either side of that that argument. Like, it's cool. I mean, I'd do the same if, I don't know, if 10 years later Gears gets rebooted or something. I don't know. Like, if Microsoft decides to be an asshole one day and shuts down the coalition and, you know, that whole thing. If it was an IP I loved and it was being remade, yeah, I'd be excited. It's like you and Mass Effect when they did that um, remaster legacy, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like, I hate the company, but I love that <laughs> and I want it. It kind of, yeah, like Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I made a point and I think that we did it one, one episode. It was like, I'm not buying another Ubisoft the game ever again. And then Valhalla comes out. <laughs> I'm like, my morals and uh, my Viking, you know, like kind of shit. And yeah, I bought the game. So I'm a hypocrite, but whatever. Like, that's the kind of point I'm trying to get at. I don't know if I've put that across, but whatever. That's my take on it. Well, um, so that is the Callisto Protocol is the yes. game you're thinking of. Thank the, you. Um, yeah, so that that's possibly coming out next year, and if this Dead Space game comes out next year, that would be interesting. Uh, oh, I do think about like what can you add to the Dead Space game, because because the whole point of a remake is to try and bring it a little bit further into where we are now and things that you can adjust to make a little bit better. And apart from maybe running at 60 frames or something, like I, I'm not sure what else you need to do. They, they talked about that. They actually have a lot of, um, of the documentation because it's EA, they would have all of visceral stuff now. Um, but they have all the original documentation for when that game is the first game is game made. And there was a lot of stuff, in that documentation about like big areas and different, different um, like, you know, they had to put in a corridor here just because the, the technology at the time couldn't support what they were trying to do. And then looking at some of that stuff and like, can we add that to the game, which is what they initially wanted. I'm like, that's interesting if you put some of that stuff in there, but it's, it's very clear the way that, EA, you know, because EA basically said we're, we're never going to do remasters, we're never going to do remakes, um, Money talks, and now man. they're just pumping them out, yeah. and I think they are just they are literally using it as a test bed. I think they make they're going to make these remakes to get an idea of how many people out there want the game, and is it is it enough to warrant? Okay, we're going to put money into a full game. Uh, I think. Yeah. I think Mass Effect has sold really, really well. Um, they're already working on it, but I think that just kind of gave them a, a bit more profits to put towards that game to make sure that <laughs> to make sure that it's going okay. But I think they're like Ubisoft. I think Ubisoft was the company that came out and basically said anything that we make needs to be a franchise. Like we don't want anything that's just kind of a like make this game, make profit off a game and then move on to something else, like whatever they make. And I think EA operates in the same way. So I don't think they would be putting out Dead Space like this if they didn't say, okay, how can we turn this into a a new new trilogy to go through again just to get some money out of a name? I'll put this to you. Look at Capcom. Capcom were on the verge of being bought out at the end of the 360 PS3 generation, right? Because they just... (laughs) They just made shit game after shit game. Now they're like making all their games are coming out. It hits the millions like sold on each title. Like look at Resident Evil Two Remake. That game um, was like, I I haven't bought it, but I watched Maximilian Dude. I've mentioned him a few times. He did a playthrough of it because I was curious. Because I'm a sook. I'm not going to buy that game. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to watch him play it. <laughs> and I watched it. I'm like, holy shit! Wow! Like that was just. That is a remake, like legit, and it adds to the experience um, in a lot of ways. Like everybody that knows Resident Evil Two from back in the day, it was like fixed cameras, you know, and you were moving around in that camera or whatever that's that shot, yeah. and then you move to the next one. The next one, this one, it's like a fully like three D three D environment. You can roam everywhere, wherever you're going. It's a linear experience, of course, but you, you're going through this city <clears throat> anyway. But the, the way they added to it was just amazing. It's graphically uh, an impressive beast. Um, the visceral action in it is insane. 
the atmosphere is creepy as all balls and like everything is out to kill you and it's uh, an amazing experience to watch um same can be said for uh, i watched his playthrough of resident evil 8 which is like essentially another i don't know another take on the resident evil formula like resident evil 7 did it so the capcom has been great in like reinventing their properties not just in resident evil but i mean devil may cry they're bringing that back in a, in a, in a number of ways they did that remastered release on every game on it but um like uh, i was losing my oh monster hunter is another one like, I, ne- I was never interested on monster hunter at all until my son world came along and jamie tried to get me into it i could see it i could see the appeal i didn't get it until a few months ago <laughs> but anyway what they've done is what ea should do because those games are soul experiences you don't need like an online system you don't need um the whole uh add-ons you don't need the microtransactions you don't need it to be a live service it's an experience that you can replay over and over again like we did in the old days <clears throat> what dead space needs to be is ea's resident evil 2 that's what i'm i'm getting at like if they do that it's like all right cool <laughs> you know it's not just a shot for shot remake it's not just a level by level remake which is kind of boring like why don't you just go play the old game whatever but like i i have no time for ea and what they've done to the gaming space i i'd have refused to buy their games and i haven't bought an ea game <laughs> i'm not a hypocrite like valhalla but again you know it's one of those things where you're talking about what can they add to it but that's what I hope they do, at least for the fans of Dead Space, if that's what they get, cool, very good. But that's how you do it. That's how I think they should do it. Well, I think I think fans and people that pay attention to games notice when notice when a, a developer and or publisher puts attention and thought into the game that they're making. Uh, like I think the Capcom example you made is extremely good like when resident evil 7 came out like the, like it's changed total perspective and everything and up until that point when that came out that was then the highest selling game they'd ever they'd ever made of anything and sold 9 million units and then uh and then monster hunter world comes out to everything and that's that is by far and away the highest selling game they've ever made which is 17 million units like, yeah. It's just huge, but that's because people looked at Monster Hunter World and were like, "Okay, it's not going to be exactly like the games that you've played in the past if you're into the, into this." But we're giving you something different and something new because of what we're how we're making this game. We're making it for PS4 and Xbox One, and we're going to give it to everybody. And ev- and there's just so many more players for you to enjoy it with. Like it's, um, yeah, e- EA. Uh, playing it safe at the moment with your dead spaces and mass effects and that um remakes but they will, we'll see what they do um they're not doing the wrong thing but you you're just worried about them um doing the well, right thing doing the thing the right way well yeah i mean when they're seeing their um their money whales um getting taken away from them in certain countries with their the gambling the stuff you know the laws stepping in to stop that you know so they're going shit <laughs> all right i mean we can see the um forest through the trees here and we kind of need to try and get back to some of these old ways i mean just easy money that's i mean it's probably not the fact they've got more money than they know what to do with but what well, if they did like a yeah. um i'll put put this out uh a dante's inferno i, I want that looked at again because i really enjoyed that game back in the day i I really did. I, I went to a mate's place, he had it on PS3, and uh, he was showing me this game. What was this? Like, this is God of War. He goes, nah, man. This is um, Dante's Inferno. This is EA's God of War. <laughs> and I was like, it sure is. But it was really, really good. And I ended up buying a copy for myself on 360 and really enjoyed it. I mean, that's a game I'd like to see come back. I mean, you know, those games, those action games, you don't have them anymore. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. But no, fuck EA. Give Dante's Inferno to someone else. <laughs> you know? Damn it. I'm not gonna put. I'm not gonna be a hypocrite again. Mm. Well, the, the last thing I want to uh, talk about. We've we've had a long one, so we'll make this the last. The last. Topic. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, that I think that's me too. Uh, the last one was a little story that came out. Uh, it was just uh, Insomniac were talking about Ratchet and Clank, and about how they went about making the game, and they just made a comment which it kind of touches upon that discussion that. Uh, everyone tends to have about you know difficulty in games 
in the the quote from uh no daily mike daly said that uh we have to sort of shed this conventional wisdom that games kind of need to be a hard ass for you to get satisfaction out of it we no longer think about like what will make the most elite players feel good about themselves and more what will enable everybody to have the experience they want to have uh, because that's the sort of sort of the most important thing to us so uh, I think a lot of this conversation came up when Sekiro came out uh, last year about difficulty uh, I think the biggest thing that gets misconstrued in these discussions is the difference between difficulty and accessibility because they're not necessarily one in the same thing. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm not sure if you'd heard that quote in the last couple of weeks or what your thoughts are on it. Oh, that's interesting. Cause um, I, I'm in the pool of man, give me an easy mode or a very easy mode. I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I'm past that point of going, yeah, I want this game to, you know, I want to walk away from this going, oh, I fucking earned that. Uh, I don't have that time. <laughs> you know, I mean, I really don't, nor do I have the patience or mind space in order to commit to that. Like, that's why I don't play a lot of these games like uh, Dark Souls or like even Destiny to an extent is like that. Like you need to commit and I don't want to. Like I'm playing Mortal Kombat 11 now and I put that to very easy, man, because I want to play the story, you know? Yeah. That's what I want to do and I want to kind of feel like I'm having fun, you know? Same with Injustice. I'm not good at fight, fighting games, but well, God damn it, I want to see what, who Superman right? wants to kill. Yeah, and like Jamie and I, when we played through Gears, um, I think for the most part it was on easy because we just wanted to get through the story, right? Co-op. I mean, we could have tackled it easy on like normal or hardcore, but we're just like, nah, <laughs> just chill. And it was just fine. And I, I, I totally don't get this point where these... I don't know if it's like a, these guys online, these, I'm not going to call them men, but these guys online that are like, oh yeah, you if you didn't play it on hard or very hard or legendary or something like, don't even talk to me. It's like, man, you know, no one's going to want to fuck you talking like that. <laughs> like, you know, it's not going to impress anyone. Like even the gamer girls out there are just going to be like, you're a wanker. Like, you're just a wanker. Like no one really cares. Like, oh my God, he finished Halo and legendary. Oh my God, I want his penis. Like no one's like that at all. <laughs> you know, no one. <laughs> so I, Give me easy mode on everything. Like even the, um, I know the the Sekiro type games or Dark Souls or Souls Lights, whatever the hell you want to call it. Like I know it's they're built for that crowd and they're built for that intention. But I mean, if you want to, you want you want the big sales, you're gonna put an easy mode in there. You know, I play Lego games still, man. Like like they're fun and chill. I mean, I'm playing Flight Simulator and you can just turn all the sliders all the way to easy. <laughs> you know, and it'll essentially play it itself. You know. Uh, I'm good for that. I, if any game comes out and it's like, this is that very hard and you can't do anything about it, I'm not going to play it. I, I just don't care enough. Like, I'm I'm not that gamer. But yeah, this whole argument, yeah. like I, I, I don't agree in shutting out a whole player base for you just because you like you, you want to cater to these wankers that are going to sp- skite about their achievement or something. This small crowd, but... If I was making a game, yeah, you're damn right. I'm going to be putting those very easy, easy, normal, hard, and very hard difficulties in there. Yep, because I want my nieces to play that shit or my nephews, you know? Yes. Yeah, well, I think I think first and foremost, it always comes down to, like, what is the direction and what does this developer want to make the game like? Like, what are they aiming to actually get a emotional response out of the player. Uh, yeah. And and most of the time you play on normal because when when they're testing the game on people and when they're going through and making their game, that's normally where they're aiming yeah. their focus. So, you know, I, I, my thing would be a lot of people go, oh, I put it on easy and it's just, it's just stupid, ridiculous. They should put a little bit more challenge. It's like... But you're putting it on easy to be easy. Like, it, it, it's it's hard. Like, I don't think you should ever maybe, if you were a reviewer, you wouldn't review the game on easy necessarily because that is probably not the difficulty that the developer is wanting you to get the best experience of the game. Yeah. Even playing it hardcore because everything is way off kilter. Like, enemies could be bullet sponges or, like, you just don't know what they've done just to make it, intensely difficult for people um so i think it's always so 
in in case like from software that's the audience that they're going after and that is fine and then accessibility is a whole not accessibility is a whole nother issue is a whole nother conversation um and i've used i know i've used up my quota for last of us and naughty dog today but i'm going to use one more and i think it was because it was in part two where it was the first time i realized probably the difference between the two because you can go through and get all the trophies in that game but if you can't see colors properly and you just need to and therefore you need to turn on the filter where objects will light up yellow so you know where they are and then you're not affected by any of the other visuals like coming at you then if that's the way like they get to have exactly the same experience i get by doing that so yep. that is a different conversation to the difficulty because yeah technically you can turn that on and go find all the hidden objects but like, then it's up to you. It's like, do you want the challenge of finding those objects? Because you don't have to turn it on. Yeah. And if it's just too difficult for you, that's okay. You turn it on and you find it and then you can turn it back off to try and find the next one. Like, I think that and what I think Insomniac are trying to say with this is like, uh, it's the same with the Spider-Man puzzles. Uh, you know, in the first Spider-Man, I know you've played at least where you have those little... Uh, yeah. What is it? It's like the old drain puzzles that you used to get uh, with oh, the electricity. Yeah, yeah. But you have the ability to just skip them. Like, you don't have to do them at all. And I think that's kind of what they're enabling this is in their games. They're trying to find ways, like, we are giving you stuff to do, but if you don't want to do them because if, if it's too hard, like, if you're not a puzzle guy and suddenly this game, which is an action third-person shootout or something, is throwing you puzzles and you just don't want to do that, you don't have to, but it's there if you want it. And I I think that is a good way to start approaching games, especially for bigger, bigger developers. I don't think you don't need to do it for guys that are like one, two person teams, but yes. I think that's a better way to think about making games. Well, true. I mean, you've got games like Alex the Kid that came out. That Alex Kid, Alex the Kid. It's Alex Kid, uh, DX, whatever it was called. Came out recently <laughs> and I played that. I was like, God, this game is just brutally hard. And it's because of the controls are sloppy as hell. And and it's not just me. I, I went and read and watched some reviews going, is it just me? <laughs> and I watched some reviews and I'm like, oh, thank God, it's not just me. Um, but yeah, it was fun for what it is. But I got so frustrated by the point, I just stopped playing it. Uh, there is an option or a selection within the options that you can turn on infinite lives. Um, but all your achievements are disabled. And I was like, no, I hate that. You know, like I remember back in the 360 days, there were achievements where you could finish the game, uh, or it has happened where I finished the game on easy, and I, I don't, I didn't get any achievements for it. Then I looked at the achievements list. It's like finish the game or get to X amount of progress on normal, hard, or whatever, and they weren't including easy. I'm like, oh, you assholes! Like, oh, all right, fair enough. And like, it's it's just like that where you get achievements disabled because you're trying to enjoy the game. Um, Alice Kid needs infinite lives on it because it's it's from the days where games were made when you uh, they were trying to make them as hard as possible because to uh, keep players playing them basically because it, we didn't have the influx of games that we have these days back then. So you made these games purposely difficult by design so they kept playing it for forever. You know because you I don't know about you but we got like birthdays and Christmases were about it when we got a new game <laughs> you know so we would replay the shit out of these games and you just yeah. get progressively good at it but this one disabling achievements for infinite lives so you can just keep playing the game instead of like redoing that whole chapter again um, the option and thought is nice but I, I would have put that on to be honest because I just wanted to experience this old game I grew up with I didn't want to have my ass handed to me and that, that remake for Alex Kidd it shouldn't be handled as one of those games where you need to be challenged by because it's that's not what it is. You're catering to a very select amount of people that know who Alex the Kid is, who grew up with what Alex the Kid is. No one gives a shit. He's not relevant. <laughs> He's just not. So wouldn't you want to give those people the best experience you can? I know it's just achievements, but I love getting my achievements. I like seeing the little blink thing appear on my screen. I love it. You know? So anyway... Oh, that's probably got nothing to do with it, but it just added to the whole difficulty thing. It's like, you're, you're making this game harder than it needs to be, and you've put a block on this option for me. You know, I could just put it on there, but I want my achievements. That whole thing is like, man, come on, just open it up. Open it up. Whatever. I don't know how to make games. It just... I don't. 
Yeah, I think there's just as games go more and more, just bigger games are going to have to start having more thought into them rather than just copy and paste jobs of it's like oh this other franchise did a thing so we'll just put it in our game. They're going the people will catch on quick and they'll be like, well, why was it in the game? Like, yeah. what was the purpose of it? And it doesn't need to be there because you can put more effort into more like other things. That's mm. yeah, mainly that's where I think it's going. Yeah, hashtag easy mode. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> easy. I'm playing um, when I get back onto because I was playing God of War. I oh. was playing it on New Game Plus, and rather than playing on New Game Plus on a harder difficulty, I'm playing on New Game Plus on an easier difficulty. So I have all the weapons, and it's easier. So I can just go through the story again. Oh yeah, man. I, yeah. I hear you on that because Arkham Knight, I wanted to do that. When I installed Arkham Knight a while ago and I got my file back, there's a Game Plus mode on that. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. And I jumped in and it's like on hard and you know, can't change it. I don't know why. And I'm like, no, I want this experience that you just described. <laughs> I want to play this game with everything on yeah. easy. But That's it. Uh, I'll, I'll learn. Rage. I'll learn. I'll stop. I'll stop talking because it was old man. We we'll go for it. Yeah, we, we we crossed the hour, but uh, we probably should have made up for last week anyway. But yeah. um, thank you for joining me, Chunt. It's, oh, it's great yep, as well, always. Good. Happy to be here. Oh, thanks. I love you. Yes. I'll I'll give I'll hopefully give you and everyone watching uh, more updates on the new TV next week, and I'll have mm. some have have some pictures to show everybody. Nice. Yeah, keen to see it, man. Very exciting. Very exciting. And hopefully, Jamie will be back with us he's uh he's the traveler again he's uh he's he went on a plane good on him because yeah, nobody else him in the world can for some reason mm. yeah good on him <laughs> all right i'll see you next week thank you very much all right to lose